Welcome to Whirlers Worldwide. In this video, I thought I'd take a little bit of time to show you how to twirl with Photoshop Elements rather than the big Photoshop. Now, the first thing I want to do is to load in some actions. So to do that, I need the actions panel. And if we go down here to the where it says more, there's a little arrow next to it. If I click on that, you've got some options for extra panels. Now, you probably can't see this because it goes off the, the end of my screen. But the top one says actions. If you click on that, you'll bring up the actions panel here. There are some presets already in bottom borders, lose weight, resize and special effects. But I want to load in some of the actions that we've been using. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the flyout menu, which is that right at the top corner of the actions panel. And I'm going to click on that and then I'm going to select load actions. Uh, it's going to bring me up a, a dialog box. It's already targeted to my actions file and I've got two actions in here. I've got the twirl action pack and I've got the twirl action for Photoshop elements. OK, well, we'll bring the action pack in first. I'm going to click load and that will bring that in. As you can see it there. And then I'll do it again load actions but this time I'll bring in the action for elements right so let's make a start I'll just move that and stick it out the way there so it's not in the in in front of the picture right I think what we'll do first if you have a look down here you can see that this file is like 30 megabytes it's quite a large file and that will take quite a lot of processing time so to speed things up I'm going to resize it now, a quick way, if you've got the Twirl Action Pack here, I'm just going to open this up. And down at the bottom, we've got some resize options. And I'll resize this for the smallest. So I'm going to click on a thousand pixels and then click the Play Selection button. And that now drops that down to a, from 30 megabytes down to 4.29 megabytes. A lot more handleable little bit small so I'm going to press Control and plus a couple of times to bring it up on screen right next thing I think I'll do is I'll duplicate it uh, to the side which is portrait so if I just look here I've got a little action for that called twirl setup portrait so I'm going to click on that and then click the play button again and what that does is it basically just duplicates it to the side and now I think I'd like to duplicate it landscape. So we've got four little clocks. So I'm going to now click on Twirl Setup Landscape and click on the Play, Play Selection button again. And that's duplicated it downwards for us as well. So I'll now press Control and Minus a couple of times to get it all on the screen. And I think that looks pretty cool. So let's start twirling. But first, Again, to speed it up a little bit more, I think I'll just drop the size down to a thousand pixels again because it will build it up as the twirl gets as the twirl goes on. So I'll click play the action and then control and plus a couple of times to bring it back up. And you see we're back down to four meg again, which is good. Right, I'm now gonna go and find a twirl action, but what I'll do first just to get this out of the way. I'll just close this down by clicking this little downward facing triangle here just to close up that action pack. And now I want the twirl action for Photoshop elements. I'm going to open that up. And what I'm going to do is click once on the action just to highlight it. And then we'll run it up to the play selection button and click it. And off it goes on its merry way. And we get the first twirl. I'll just accept these as they come in. That's set at 360. I'll go with that to get a nice twirl. I'll do a negative 360. You can change them if you like. I'll just accept them as, as they come. We'll do another positive twirl value. you. I'll leave that at 150. And we'll leave this at minus 150. But you can try with different numbers and you'll get different twirls each time. We then get the Get Creative with Waves. So I'm going to click Continue and we'll have a look at the Wave dialog. 
Now I can play, we've got the sine, we've got triangle and we've got square. I'll just stick with sine today and we've got a little preview here and I'm just going to click and drag and we'll see what we can get. That looks to have squished it a little bit. We'll try moving the wavelength. So it looks a bit odd. Oh, there we go. That's nice. And then we'll play with the wavelength there. Give it a bit of amplitude. And you never know what these are going to turn out like until you actually see them. And we'll just give it a tweak there. And then we'll click OK. Ooh, all right, that's uh, that's looking quite good. I'm going to control the minus just to zoom out a little bit. And you'll see here that it's obviously quite tall because what it's done, it, it's taken a portrait image and it's flipped it and duplicated it in portrait. So we've got something that's twice as big. Now we can change that. It's flattened it down. The action has actually flattened it right down. So we've only got one layer. But what we can do is we can go on back in history to the last history state before the finish, before it flattened it. So if I go up to edit and undo merge down, you'll see now if you look in the layers panel, I've got two layers. So I've got now the top layer and the bottom layer. So if I now select my move tool, what I can do is I can click on this layer and I can move it about. And if I hold the shift key down as well, it actually moves it up and down in a straight line. OK, I'll move it down a little bit just to show you. And then I'm going to change the blend mode of this top layer. Instead of normal, let's try lighter colour. So you can experiment. And you can see now that it's giving me a whole different pattern. As I move that down, you can see how it's going to blend. And if I want, let's take it right down to the bottom and we'll leave it there. So we've got a load of transparent pixels up here, which we need to get rid of. And we'll do that with the crop tool. Go over to the crop tool. And I'm going to crop it just here. And then double click inside the crop or click the tick to actually crop it. OK, I've missed a little bit at the top, so I'll go back into the crop tool again. And I'll crop it just a little bit lower. Just drag that down a little bit and then click the tick again. There we go. I'll control and plus just to zoom it in a little bit. Oh, that's looking quite good. Quite impressed with that. OK. I'm at a point where I think I'm going to flatten it down. So I'm going to go to the little fly out menu, not on the actions panel. I'll just move that out of the way, not on the actions panel. Oops, shut that down. But on the main layers panel. And I'm going to go to this little doohickey in the corner. And we're going to select merge down. And that will now flatten everything back down to that original size. And I'm quite liking that. It's looking quite good. Let's now see if a little bit of contrast has helped. So I'm going to go up to Enhance and Adjust Lighting and Levels. Or you can see there's a keyboard shortcut of Control and L. And what I'll do, I'll just drag this white slider in just to lighten the whites up a little bit. Darken the blacks a little bit. And then we'll just play around with that mid-tone slider. Just till I get it looking a little bit more contrasty. I think I'm happy with that. And I'm going to click OK. Now I've, I've done with the Actions panel, so I'm just going to go up to the top corner here and I'm going to click to close that panel down. Where am I going next? Well, I think I'll tip it up. I think what we'll do is rotate it. We'll make it horizontal. So we'll go to Image and Rotate and we'll go 90 degrees right. Yeah, like that. Control and plus just to zoom it in a little bit. Ah, oh, this is looking cool. Right. I think what I'd like to do now is put a board around it. So I'm going to go to the edit menu. I'm going to go down to stroke outline selection. Now, before you do this, the, the clues in, in here, it says selection. So what I need first is a selection active. I think so. Just to make sure, I'm going to go Control and A just to put a selection round the border. 
and now I'm going to go to edit stroke outline I think I'd like this to be a white border and I'll maybe leave it about you now let's see what 10 pixels does yeah that's okay I'm going to control and D to deselect that so I've got a nice white border around the edge now I think to finish it off I'd like to put it on a black background so I'm going to use a little bit of a sneaky way to do that I'm going to use the crop tool but first I'm going to make a new layer and I'm going to put it underneath because we're going to fill that layer with black to act as the background so I'm going to go up to me new layer icon which is just here create a new layer and then I'm going to drag that underneath the twirl layer right let's get the crop tool and we'll drag a crop across and you can see now that we've got the bounding boxes and we've got the rule of thirds grid but instead of cropping smaller which is what you normally would do with the crop tool I'm gonna to crop bigger so I'm gonna drag the crop out and drag it out that way and then just reposition the crop so it's a little bit nearer the top than it is the bottom because I want to put a title at the bottom okay I'm going to click the tick to accept it and I've now got a nice bigger area that's transparent so what I'm going to do now is fill that in with black so I need black as my foreground color well at the moment it's white so I'm going to press the D key to reset to default and that will bring that up as black and then with a little keyboard shortcut of alt and backspace I'm going to fill that background there with black and then I'm happy enough that that's good so we'll think about some text for the bottom so I'll go and select the text tool I'll select a good I mean there's loads to choose from but I think Gaudi Stout's probably a good one about 24 pixels we'll see what size that is and I'll click just to make sure that we're uh, we're in the right place and then I'm going to type now it's a secret word because I'm typing with black text on a black background so that's not really much good so I'm just going to highlight that text and then go down to the little color swatch here in the panel and I'll change it to white and then we'll actually be able to see it that's better and then I'll just click and drag it into the middle and there we are if you want you can leave that as, as your as layers um, or you could flatten it down if you want to to post it online or anything like that so I'm gonna click on the little fly out in the corner I'm gonna select merge down and then I'll select merge visible and that'll merge it all down and flatten it to one layer and then I'll save it out I'll go file and save as and save it out as a JPEG all ready to go onto the web I'll put that in as a dash one so it doesn't overwrite my original file and then click save and I think our work here is done well, I hope you enjoyed that I hope you find it useful if you want to see more videos on Photoshop or Lightroom or photography, um, please have a look at my website, kenfisherphotography.com, or visit my YouTube channel, Live Link Training. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.